In today's video, I'll show you how to install and configure Maintainer. Maintainer is a library management system built to help you save space by finding those outlying media items that have just been sitting there taking up space. Maintainer makes managing your media easy. No longer will you have to worry about precious hard drive space being taken up by media that isn't even being watched. Let's get Maintainer installed. And before we get into the installation, just so you know, Plex is required for maintainer to function. That being said, let's move on. All right, here we are in Unraid. Let's go over to our apps tab. And here we're gonna search for maintainer. You'll see it's the first one on the list here. We don't need the overlay helper or the poster overlay. So once you find it, go ahead and click install. Looking through the list here, everything looks pretty good so far. We get down to web UI. Let's check and make sure that port is available. I'm gonna scroll down and expand show Docker allocations. Go back to that port number. I'm gonna double click on it. Hit Control F on the keyboard, and here it shows two results, and they are both right there. We're just making sure that there's nothing down here in a previous allocation. If nothing was found down there, then we're good to go forward. We're going to stick with the default part of 6246. Data location is the app data folder. Next down, we've got time zone. For the time zone, if you're not in the Chicago time zone, just go ahead and change it to whatever your time zone is, and mine is Detroit. And if you're unsure of exactly what your time zone is or you don't know the exact name for it, let me show you a website to handle that. I'm going to open a new tab. I'm going to go to momentsjs.com slash time zone, and I'll leave a link for this in the description just so it's handy for you. Once you go there, scroll down a little bit, you'll see a world map. Basically, just look at your area. Me, I am in Michigan. If you look at the top above the world map, you'll see the name up here. This is what you're hovering over. That's going to be the area that you're selected on. I'll go to Michigan. Right here, it says America slash Detroit. I'm all set here. I'm going to go ahead and close that page and we'll get back to the installation. So go ahead and enter your time zone here. And once you're done, we can go ahead and close this find feature. And I'm going to hide Docker allocations just to clean it up a bit. And then I'll go to the bottom and we'll click apply. And while that's installing, why don't you come join us on Discord? I left the link down in the description for you. And once that's all done, go ahead and click done. Now let's jump over to our Docker tab and we will look for maintainer in the list. And there it is over on the right hand side i'm going to toggle on auto start just so it starts when we start up our unraid server back over on the left i'm going to click on the maintainer icon drop down and select web ui plex is the only one that is absolutely required everything else overseer jelly seer radar sonar all those those are all optional we're going to need to authenticate plex before we can continue the top option here under server should be authenticate to load servers if it's not you can drop down and select it there. Next down, we've got our name. And I'm going to call this demo Plex. Host name or IP is going to be your IP address or the host name for your Plex server. Once again, on the demo machine here, it is 10.0.0.11. Next, it wants the port number. And the default port number for Plex is 32400. It's already in there. At the bottom, we can click on authenticate with Plex. It comes up. We need to sign in. Now back at the top here under server, you'll see it says press the button to load available servers. Click the little arrows chasing themselves. It'll go out and retrieve the servers and then load up the results. Now we can drop down and select which server we want. This is my demo server and I'm gonna choose my local IP address here. Now on the bottom right, we need to click save changes. Once it's saved, let's go ahead and hit test. You should see here successfully connected to Plex. Once your connection is successful, we're gonna to need to move on. Let's go up to the top and we'll go to overseer. If you have Overseer running on your server, then you're gonna to wanna to set up the settings here for Overseer. If you don't have it set up, it's not required, but if you do have it, then it's gonna be required to manage Overseer. So if you have it, then definitely put in the information for it. Under URL, I'm gonna put in my local IP address for the server. So it's gonna be HTTP colon forward slash forward slash. And then the server IP address, which I've just entered, then you'd enter a colon, then you're gonna enter the port number for your overseer server. The default is 5055. And if you're unsure of what yours are, then let's jump back to Unraid and I'll show you how to find that real quick. We're gonna to need to go to overseer anyhow to get an API key. So we'll find overseer in the list. My overseer is under my media requesters folder. I'm gonna expand that, find it in the list, click on the icon and select web UI. And right up in the URL field, you will find the URL, IP address and port number for that server. So you could just copy that you don't need the slash login, just the beginning part. Go back to your maintainer settings and then paste that in. Since we're going to need the API key, let's go back to Overseer and we'll go grab that. I'm going to sign in first. 
over on the left, we're going to go to settings. You'll find API key underneath general and then general settings. It's right there. We'll click on the little copy icon over here. We'll go back to maintainer and we'll paste that API key in. We'll hit test, make sure the connection is successful and it is. Then we'll hit save changes and we're done with overseer. Next option is jelly seer. If you have jelly seer on your server, I do not, but if you do, it's the same thing. Put in the HTTP colon and then the IP address and port number for your Jelly Seer. Go into Jelly Seer, grab the API key, paste that in, save it, test it. It's a pretty simple process, just like Overseer. Moving on, next item over is Radar. If you're running Radar and you want Maintainer to use its data to help move stuff around and watch the parameters for it, then you'll need to set that up. Once again, Radar is not required, but if you want Maintainer to access Radar and to use its information to monitor and unmonitor movies and that kind of stuff, you're gonna to need to put in the information for it. So I'm gonna add a radar server. I'm gonna click add server. Server name is just gonna be radar for me. You can name it whatever you'd like. Once again, host name or IP address, you put in the information. Mine is on my demo server. Default port number for radar is 7878. Obviously if yours is different, make sure you set it up properly. I'm gonna jump down API key. Let's go over to radar and grab that. I'm going to go back to my Unraid server. I'll find Radar under my Media Automation folder. Go into it. The API key for Radar is located under Settings. Then down to General. And then scroll down a bit. And you'll see your API key listed there. Click the Copy icon. Go back to Maintainer. And paste it in. We'll hit Test. Connection was successful. We'll hit Save Changes. If you have more than one Radar server, you can just come back here. Hit Add Server. Fill out the information for your next Radar server and do the same exact process. Don't need that, I'll get out of there. Then we'll head over to Sonar. Sonar, once again, if you wanna use Maintainer to manage Sonar, you're gonna to need to enter the information. Same exact process, add server, give it a name, Sonar, IP address. All right, the default port for Sonar is 8989. API key, let's go back to our Docker containers. We'll find Sonar, open it up, web UI, log in, once again, Settings over on the left, scroll down, general, scroll down here, we'll go under security, and under API key, click the little copy icon. Back to maintainer, and we'll paste that in in the API key field. Hit test, it's successful, hit save changes. Once again, if you have more Sonar servers, you can just add server and go through the same process. Next option up here on the top, we've got Tatuli. Not required, but you can fill it out. I'm gonna clean up a couple tabs here and see if I've got Satuli installed on my demo server. I'm not sure that I do. Looks like I don't have it installed on my system here, but I do have it on my main production machine. If you want a video on it, drop me a message down in the comments, let me know, and I'll get one together for you. But as you can tell here, it's just like setting everything else up. You put in the URL, the port number for it, the API key, save it, test it, and you're good to go. If you do have Tatuli installed and you don't know where the API key is located, let me tell you where to find that real quick. If you go to the top right corner, you'll find settings. Down underneath there, you'll find web interface. And then API key should be listed right there. Next, we've got notifications. Ah, oh, looks like I knew a Patreon member. Thanks, Eric. I appreciate that. All right, under notification settings, if you want to add a notification agent, click the big plus add agent. Give it a name, but probably don't know what name you want yet. So if you look under agent, you can see all the agents that are available. You'll see here you've got listed email, Discord, Lunacy, Slack, Telegram, Pushbullet, Pushover, Webhook, and Gotify. Pick your notification service of choice, fill out the required information for it, and then at the bottom, you'll see the different types of notifications that you can receive. You just select which ones you want. Like if you wanna be notified when media is added to a collection, you just select it. Media about to be handled, once again, click it. Just go ahead and choose what you want. Once you're good, test it and save it, make sure everything's working, and then move on. Next, we've got logs. Logs are just that, they're logs. Shows you information down at the bottom here, what's happening in the logs. Next option over is jobs. These are different cron settings for the different jobs that are gonna be ran. Last one is about. Tells you basic information about the application. If you're unsure of something, you'll find under useful links, documentation, which is always nice to go check that out. You can get more detail on each item. You want to talk to somebody on their Discord server, there's a link for that as well. But for now, we're done here. Let's go over to the left side and click on rules. Now here, let's create our first rule. We'll click on the plus new rule. We'll give it a name. Let's call this old movies. 
under description. This is entirely up to you. You can give it any kind of description. It's just kind of for your information of what this rule is. Let's go with old unwatched movies uh, that are over, I don't know, a year old, something like that. Your library will drop down and select whether it's movies or a TV show. This is going to be for movies. Your radar server, which one do you want it to monitor? This is going to be the only one I have, so just radar. The radar action, we've got a couple different options here. We can just choose to delete them. We can unmonitor and delete the files, unmonitor and keep the files, or do absolutely nothing. I'm just going to go delete. Take action after how many days? And this will be the duration of days the media remains in the collection before deletion or unmonitoring. 30s default, let's go with that. Scrolling down a little bit, we'll find the rules section, section one here. The first value, select first value, we're going to drop down and we're going to look for radar, date added, and then action, we'll do before. The second value, we're going to choose the amount of days, which is right there. And then the custom value, we're going to put in the number of days. And in the description, I had said a year, so let's do 365 days. And that's rule number one set up. But we can also add other rules to this. So to do that, we click add rule. You'll see rule number two shows up. We can do the operator. We'll do and or, either one. It was added 365 days ago. And what? Under first value, we're going to drop down and find Plex, which is right here. And we're going to say times viewed. How many times has it been viewed? The action is going to be equals. The second value, we'll drop down and select a number. And under custom, we're going to change that to zero. So it's saying if it was added to radar before 365 days ago, and Plex has not had any views on it, making sense so far? If you want more detail, you just hit add rule, and you put in some more information. You could say, or... You know, and do whatever you want. It's been viewed, uh, let's say, smaller than, less than a number, and let's say less than eh, five times. Doing that would make it so that it has to have been added to radar more than 365 days ago, and it's been watched zero times, or it has been viewed less than five times. You can keep adding rules here and fine tuning it and tweaking it as much as you need. Once you're happy with the rules, you would hit save in the bottom left, but we're not gonna do that yet. These rules can be very powerful, but they can also be a little tricky to figure out all the correct details. So let me show you a fantastic option using community-based rules. All right, so I'm gonna delete off my rules here and go back to the top. And next to rules, over on the right-hand side, you'll find community. Let's click on that. Now we can look through the list here for something that we'd like. And you'll see here a list of rules that have been created by the community. And they are listed by Karma, so the first one here has 750 meaning it's been used a lot. It's very popular. If you don't find what you want in the first page, go ahead and click next down at the bottom and load up some more stuff. Once again, you can keep clicking next until you find something that matches what you're looking for. And this one down here, movies, zero times played and added 400 days or more ago, not viewed in 400 days. That's pretty close to what I was looking for. So I'll find that one, click on it, and then I will click import. And now you'll see it pulled in all the rules for that. You look up at the top here, all this stuff remains the same. We didn't change that at all. Under the first rule, we've got Plex times viewed, which is currently set to equals a number of zero. So how many times has it been viewed in Plex? Zero. Rule number two, and it's been added before 400 days ago. Last rule here is the last view date is before 400 days ago. If you're happy with that, or if you'd rather set it to 365, you can just go in here and change the values to whatever you want it to be. I'm going to go with 365, so they're all in the last year. Once you're happy with it, go ahead and hit save. And now I'll show you the rules and the results for it. It's inactive. It's found three movies that match that rule. Now we can have it clean up the old movies if we want. You just click run rules, and it'll go through and run that rule. But over on the left, we're going to go to collections now and see what's there. All right, collections. These are collections or groups that hold all the media that either got picked up by the handling of the corresponding rules or got manually added. So if the rules found something, it's gonna get added to the collection here. And then when the specified number of days that the media must live in that collection is passed, in this case, we had set it for 30 days, then the collection handler is gonna perform its actions. It's gonna do whatever you want it to do. In this case was to delete the media. If you wanna view a collection, once you find it, just go ahead and click on it and it shows you the media. 
We've got a couple other options here, media, exclusions, and info. These are exclusions, pretty self-explanatory. And info is just information about the collection itself. The date it was added, the handled media collection items, and how long it took last time it ran. And then the logs are down at the bottom. If we go back to media, we can click on test media, and then we can type in a name of an item up here and see if it matches. So we'll go in here and type Africa Screams, find that, click on it, and hit test. And down at the bottom, it shows you the output, shows you what it's analyzing. So it found the Plex ID of 71 for the item, looked at it, went through verified Plex, how many times viewed, it's been viewed once, it's looking for zero, so the result is false. Rule number two, looking at the dates, when it was viewed, once again, result there is false. And this part here allows you to kind of test things and to fine tune it. And if it's not working and you thought maybe the rule should be, you can go in here, test it and go, oh, well, that's why, because it's got a view. And then you can go back and mark it as unviewed or whatever you need to do to, to test. Close that out. Next item down is settings. And we've already been there. That's all the items across the top here. Sonar, radar, jellyfin, all that stuff. So if you need to go add one or change something, that's where you go do it at. So now you can go add all the rules that you need and let Maintainer keep track of your library and clean things up. Maintainer is a powerful tool that you now have available to serve you. As always, when it comes to media, make sure that you own the media that's on your server. But just to be safe, I use and trust private internet access. If you're not a private internet access customer yet, then I'll leave my link in the description and that'll save you 83% on your subscription cost. It's a fantastic deal. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, like Eric did earlier, consider becoming a Patreon. Patreon members get early access to my videos and they are ad and sponsor free. The link is down in the description. Until then, check out one of these next. And I'll see you in that one.